Next, we are going to hear from Lucas Nadalskis, who is an incoming neurosciences PhD candidate at the U University of California, Santa Barbara. And he is going to speak to us about the unimaginable productivity burden that inaccessible content places on researchers who rely on assistive technology. Thank you so much, Lucas. Thank you. So as uh, Chin was saying, my name is Lucas Nadalskis. I am currently a second year master's at Carnegie Mellon in the biomedical engineering department working on uh, cortical brain implants. I am starting my PhD program at the University of California, uh, Santa Barbara in the fall, where I will keep working on cortical implants for the visual cortex. And, but today it's, I didn't prepare a neuroscience talk. Today I am talking a little bit about the process that I needed to go to actually get to my research and to start working on what I work now. So I was first born in Brazil in, 1990, in 1994. I became blind at the age of five in the early 2000s. And whenever I became blind, we didn't have um, assistive te technology in Brazil. We didn't have disability centers. We had nothing. Uh, so at the time, um, my mother needed to actually learn how to write Braille and how to read Braille. And she became my disability resource center throughout middle school and high school. And, and I was in high school in Brazil, I decided that I wanted to work with computer science. And I, this, I thought that doing that in Brazil would be quite challenging. So I wanted to apply for a university in the US. And I, I applied and I got accepted into the University of Minnesota. And as soon as I applied, I found a couple of different things. Um, first, that the reality in the US was indeed much better than in Brazil, but it was still not the paradise I thought it would be. And one of the first interesting things that happened was when I went to take my exams, they gave me a Braille booklet and I couldn't read anything because it was a contracted Braille and I didn't know the contracted Braille existed. So I needed to take all of my, exam my examinations verbally and move to the US first, then to actually learn uncontracted Braille. So when I started my undergraduate at the University of Minnesota in computer science, I uh, discovered that disability resource centers were a thing and that someone would translate my books for me and would provide me all of this assistance. However, the problem was that although um, they uh, did a fantastic job, transcribing materials does require time. And I needed to provide materials very much in advance, which in a lot of cases, it was not possible. And that's where I started to get more familiar with LaTeX. Because as was said before, I could read the materials pretty okay because the disability center would send me them. However, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't produce any materials. So LaTeX was the solution that I found for that. And I used that throughout undergrad. Whenever I started my research uh, here at Carnegie Mellon, two things happened. One, I moved from computer science to neuroscience. And second, I started to deal with the reality of scientific research, which meant reading papers. So now it's not that I have three months to convert a book to the class. I have two days to read a paper for lab meeting. And that would make it much harder to ask the disability center to convert the paper for me and papers are generally not accessible. 
So how would I do this? So I, um, I use a screen, I use a OCR software to first convert the paper into LaTeX and then ask some cited colleague to go through the LaTeX I compare with the PDF and from the LaTeX I would import this to Duxbury, which is a software that translates uh, formats into Braille and I emboss this. Uh, I do usually use embossed papers more than digital or um, electronic Braille because in my situation, I think that dealing with the math content is easier in embossed than it is on electronic. And I put a picture here of an embosser and from a paper. However, papers could be accessible and they could be accessible if they're written in HTML. And a lot of people are doing um, work now to have the papers done in HTML. And those are great because I could use MathJax to actually read those papers with my screen reader or to send those papers to my Braille display and reading Braille. Uh, however, not only a lot of old papers are not accessible in HTML, but a lot of books are not available in HTML. And in my era of research, we still rely a lot on the information that comes from books. And that's a very difficult situation for me because whenever I need to deal with a book, I know, uh, I know it's gonna be a problem because a lot of times it's difficult to get source materials and almost always it's impossible to get the HTML of that book. So my one point that I really wanted to drill today is uh, how HTML has improved our lives and how much HTML allows me to be as independent as my cited colleagues. And also my doing my research much quicker because if I'm doing, if I'm dealing with all of these processes, um, I think every blind person that works on research is familiar with that. We need to work at least twice as much as everybody else. So, you know, in, a, in order for me to not work 10, 11 hours a day to access half of a paper because the process to convert the paper was not perfect, the only way that I could do this is through HTML. And so not only on papers, but on books and all of the other materials, um, if you're gonna deal with Having math content dealing with the HTML makes it much more easy. Uh, however, embossing HTML is something that we still struggle a little bit with. There might be methods to do it, but I haven't found a good way to go from the HTML to emboss papers. And it's interesting because people think that whenever we are accessing contents, we are usually using screen readers which is true, but in a lot of situations, we also need to have this material whether embossed or translated to Braille in some sort of way. So it's important to keep those two factors in mind whenever we are working on, on producing accessible material. Thank you very much for coming here. I leave my contact information here. Uh, anybody has any follow-up questions? And thank you very much.